Shalom, shalom, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University. I'll be your host this evening, Elder Lynn. My brothers and sisters, we'll be taking a look at a pretty interesting teaching on this evening and the heading of this teaching. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. My brothers and sisters, as we very well know, it is in extremely important we watch who we learn from. I heard this pastor that I normally deal with here and now uh, mention to his congregation that this represented blood being in heaven, Revelation 19 and 13. It is extremely important we watch who we learn from. Obviously, he hasn't studied the scriptures to show himself approved unto the Most High God as to what's recorded here in the Word of God. It is important that we search the scriptures for ourselves and do our due diligence to understand those things, my brothers and sisters, that's recorded in the Word of God. It is extremely important that those things that we are learning, we apply to our lives because that's going to help us out a great deal when we stand before God. Because the more we learn of his word, the more we understand it, what's recorded, and the more that we are obeying those things that's required of us, the more we become in, into his image. We have to clearly keep that in mind as we're going on this journey. But we also have to make sure that we're separating ourselves from those things that's, that's not true according to the word of God. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. So my brothers and sisters, I hope you have your notebook, pad, ink, pen, and paper. And as always, most importantly, your Bible. And let's get started. And we'll get started right here in the book of Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 1. And it's recorded. The vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the creator, Yahweh, concerning Edom, for thought. We have heard a rumor from the Spirit of God, and including an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. So we see clearly that Obadiah is going to give us information as to what's going on with, uh, with our people. Keep in mind that this deals with Esau and Jacob. Keep that in mind as we're going on this journey. We have to understand that there were things that Esau has done to his brother and still doing right to this day. It is extremely important that we understand these things. But when we listen to these men and these so-called women in these church buildings, that causes a rift between us and God because we allow these men and women to pull us away from the truth of God's word. So... Before we go any further, let's just pivot for a moment. Let's go to Revelation. Revelation chapter 19, and we're going to hit verse 11. When he explained, or uh, when he was teaching his congregation, he started with this verse here, and it's recorded. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse for thought, and he that sat upon him was called faithful and including true. And in righteousness, he doeth judge and make war. So he, he read all the way down to 13. But this verse in particular, he started out because he wanted to give you insight as to how he's going to deliver his message. So this is key to his doctrine. That's what he wanted you to, to see. That's what he wanted his congregation to see. And I saw heaven open. So he associated the blood here in 13. He associated that being in heaven. As we clearly know, my brothers and sisters, it's extremely important we watch who we learn from. That can't be true because we clearly understand what's recorded here in the word of God. We go right here to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 50. And it's recorded. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. For thought, neither doeth 
corruption inherit incorruption. It's clear. We have to always understand what is recorded in the Word of God. It is extremely important we follow His ways and not the ways of the world. Because if we constantly hold to these men and women in these buildings, we're going to have an issue on our journey finding out what those truths are that's recorded in the Word of God. That's why we have to always search the Scriptures for the truth. And if we are not sure of it, stand still. Just stand still until, until you're able to understand and learn what those truths are. But you don't want to put yourself in a position to always go before the Spirit. It's the Spirit that's leading us and not we ourselves. So if you don't know, just stand still. And if need be, you'll get that information and you'll get back to them. It's just as simple as that. But you don't go off on a tangent thinking that you could speak for God. You allow God to speak for himself. That's the purpose of you being the vessel. Keep that in mind, okay? So let's go back to our teaching. We'll reiterate Obadiah chapter 1, verse 1. And it's recorded. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the creator Yahweh concerning Edom. For a thought we have heard a rumor from the Spirit of God, and including an ambassador, ambassador, a messenger, is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and including let us rise up against her in battle. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel, chapter 25. And let's hit right here at verse 12, and we'll go down to 14. And it's recorded, Thus saith the Creator, Yahweh, guide of Israel, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance, and hath greatly offended, and revenged himself upon him for thought. Therefore thus saith the Creator, Yahweh, I will also stretch out mine hand, my power upon Edom, and including will cut off man and beast from it for thought, and it will make it desolate from Teman. For thought and they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. 14. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the power of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. For thought and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Creator, Yahweh. Exactly the point. See, we, 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 we need to see why he had blood on his vesture. See, because we got a lot of our brothers and sisters that's still doing, doing ourselves in right to this day. Even as we speak, we have to understand that it's extremely important that we, we follow the ways of God and we separate ourselves from the flesh, from the ways of the world. It's important that we understand these things because all of these things, if we allow to become a stumbling block for us, we're not going to be able to see what those truths are that's recorded in the Word of God because we're too busy allowing other people and under, other individuals to pull us away from those truths. See, you can't allow these guys to feed you what their doctrine is to manipulate your thinking in terms of what it is what those truths are that's recorded in the Word of God, and they're trying to mix that with their doctrine to make it seem as if they know what they're talking about when, in fact, they have not the slightest idea what the truths are that's recorded in the Word of God. They'll tell you things, there's blood in heaven for eternal atonement. That illustrates, just that alone, illustrates that these individuals that says these things are not uh, wanting to remove themselves from the sin business. That's clear. Otherwise, why would, or to them, why else would blood be in heaven? It has to be in there for that, according to them. See, we can't allow anyone to manipulate our thinking and what, what we know to be true just because of one text. We can't allow that, okay? So we have to be strong in, in our walk, my brothers and sisters, and we have to always understand that if we're, uh, if we're understanding those things that's recorded, we have to hold to those ways, okay? 
So let's keep that in mind as we're on this journey. So from here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 7. And it's recorded. Concerning Edom, thus saith the Spirit of God of hosts, will thought, is wisdom no more in teeming? That's a question. Is counsel perish from the prudent? Question. Is their wisdom, is their wisdom vanished? Are you with me? From here, let's go to Baruch. Baruch chapter 3 and verse 22. And it's recorded. Oh, I'm sorry. Verse 22, excuse me. It hath not been heard of in Canaan, neither hath it been seen in T-Man. What? Wisdom. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 29 and verse 14. <clears throat> and it's recorded. Therefore, behold, remember, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, exactly the point. And the understanding of the prudent men shall be hid. So if, if, uh, if we're not doing those things that's required of us, just as Esau had another idea in his head dealing with his brother Jacob. So just as we see, as we go through scripture, that he was against his own brother. And again, we could see that today. We have to understand, my brothers and sisters, that when we're on this, while we're on this journey, we have to take in as much knowledge as possible. Because the more we take in, the more we become in that image. The more we know, the more we grow in the word of God. So when we stand before God, it's, again, I've said it once before and I'll say it again here. It's just like God looking in the mirror. When he's looking at you, we stand before God. He just see an exact replica of himself providing we hold to his ways. That's the, that's the purpose. That's the purpose of us killing off this flesh. That's the purpose of us learning of our God and learning of his ways. That's the whole purpose. So we have to keep these things in mind as we're on this journey and keep our focus, okay? So let's reiterate this text again. Isaiah 29, 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, even marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be hid. So from here, let's go back to Jeremiah, chapter 49, and we'll hit verses 8 and 10. And it's recorded. It says, flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of Dedan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that I will visit him. If grape gatherers come to thee, will they not leave some gleaning grapes? Question. If providing thieves by night, they will destroy till they have enough. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. Exactly the point. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is, is not. From here, let's go to Malachi and pull some information. Malachi chapter 1, verse 3. And it's recorded. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste. 
for the dragons of the wilderness. Exactly the point. Why? Because he's done this great sin and these evil deeds against his own brother. So that kindled wrath with the Most High God. That's why it's important for us to learn of the ways of God and understand those things that's recorded and learn from those men that God sent from his heart to feed us with the knowledge and understanding of his word. Because these men and women in these church buildings have not the slightest idea what the truths are. They wouldn't even know the truth if it was sitting next to them. And that's the sad of it because they call themselves teachers of the word of God when in fact you got these individuals especially these uh, female uh, uh, so-called teachers shouldn't even have uh, uh, be teaching God's word in no type of setting. So it's clear that they are not studying as they should. It's clear that they don't understand those things that's recorded. If so, they would have never put themselves, I'm sure, in this position. But there again, it's, a, it's only for their own greed. Keep that in mind. It's only for their own imagination. This is why they do these things. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Job. Job 22 and 3. Let's hit verse 19. And it's recorded. Egypt shall be a desolation, and including Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood, innocent life in their land. Are you with me? This is why God had the blood on his garment. And it was soaked. Let's, let's keep that in mind. This, this, is, this is what's going to go down, my brothers and sisters. We just have to understand what what's going on in the word of God. These men and women, they come and they call themselves teachers of the word of God and they teach and everything contrary to it. Not even understanding this, everything that they, they seeking out is according to the, their fleshly desire. They don't understand that. Why? Because they don't understand what's recorded in the, way, in the word of God. So they assume everything. So they go to these theology uh, colleges and all of these cemetery schools and thinking that they're being taught truth when the scriptures wasn't even given to them to teach anyone. That's the purpose. God gives it to his people. So if you have, for instance, if you have a heathen that's teaching a group of Hebrews, that, that, that's, that's, that, that shouldn't even be. Because the word wasn't given to them. It wasn't given to them to teach. It's clear in scripture as to who these gifts were given to. The problem that we have is humbling ourselves to receive those things and hold them to the ways of God. Because we want to have it our way. We want always like to go into these other places and sit next to our favorite church member. All of these things come into play with, with a Christian. You know, they have that mindset. You can't tell me what to do. I know what's going on in the word of God. I've been doing this for years. You hear all this type of accusations come out the mouth of a Christian, and it only showcases how stupid they really and truly are. Why? Because they don't search the scriptures for the truth. They don't search to see if, in fact, the man that's standing before them is telling them the truth. Verse 19, Job 3.19, Egypt shall be a desolation, and including Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah, because they have shed innocent blood in their land. But Judah shall dwell for the, forever. But Judah shall dwell forever, and Jerusalem from the generation to generation, for I will cleanse their blood that I have not cleansed, for the Spirit of God dwelleth in where? Let's highlight that alone. In Zion. Dwelleth in his people. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 32. 
Ezekiel 25 and verse 9. And it's recorded. Therefore, for this reason, remember, behold, I will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which are on his frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Ship, excuse me, my brothers and sisters, Beth, excuse me, I gave you the wrong text, forgive me. It should have been Ezekiel 35 and 9. Forgive me, my brothers and sisters. I'm going a little too quick here. And it's recorded. I will make the perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall not return. And including, ye shall know that I am the Spirit of God. So we see clearly that the focus is on Esau and what he has done to his brother. That's his focus. That has kindled a great wrath with the Most High God. Keep that in mind. From here, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 34. And let's hit verse 5. And it's recorded. For my sword, my word, shall be bathed in heaven. Remember, behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, on Edom, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Are you with me? From here, let's go to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and we'll hit 42. And it's recorded. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and including my sword shall devour flesh for thought, and including that with the blood of the slain and of the captivities from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. The Most High God is not going to be playing, my brothers and sisters. He's going to, he's coming to put in work. So if, if we are holding to things that we shouldn't be and doing those things that's pleasing unto us, keep one thing in mind. You're going to feel the blunt of God's wrath. You're going to know exactly what are those things that's recorded that you should have taken heed to. Keep one thing in mind. You still have an opportunity if there's anyone here that has not surrender themselves unto the spirit of the most high God to learn of his ways and to follow and to uh, do those things that's required of him or her. You have an opportunity. If you're one that still frequents these church buildings, you still have an opportunity. If you're in the sound of my voice, you still have an opportunity to change your walk. It's never too late for us, my brothers and sisters, to the objective is for us to humble ourselves. We need to humble ourselves and learn the ways of God and learn of those things that it, uh, we must do to receive eternal life. But we surely can't receive it in these buildings. You're just fooling yourself if you're a member of these churches. Keep that in mind. Let's reiterate this text again. Deuteronomy 32, 42. I will make my arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh for thought and that with the blood of the slain and of the captivities from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. From here, let's go back to Isaiah 34 and 6. And it's recorded. The sword of the Spirit of God is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and including goats, with the fat of kidneys of the rams, for the Spirit of God hath sacrificed, watch this, in Bosra, and a great slaughter in the land of Edom, Adumia. Why? It's because of how he treated his brother Jacob. This is clearly why the Most High God's garment was dipped in blood. Let's continue to move forward. From here, let's go to Isaiah 63. 
Isaiah 63 and 1. And it's recorded. Who is this that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? Question. This is that, this that is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. We clearly know that this is Jehovah. I want you to clearly understand that. Because again, he's avenging Jacob because of how Esau has treated his brother. From here, let's go to Isaiah 34. Isaiah 34, we'll hit verses 7 and 8. And it's recorded. And including the unicorns, the rhinoceros shall come down with them, and the bullocks with bulls for thought, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Spirit of God's vengeance, and including the year of the recompenses, the rewards for the controversy of Zion. Are you with me? See, the unicorns came down with them and the bullocks with bulls. This unicorn represents strength, power. Most high God is not playing with us, my brothers and sisters. We need to understand that, you know, if 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 we're doing those things that's not pleasing to God and we're trying to hold to them and we're just we're just throwing away everything that's recorded here in the word of God because we don't want to hear it. We want to cast it behind our back. We are going to have a problem with God forever if we don't get this corrected before that flesh will end expire. I want you to understand that. It is extremely important. Look here. All you have to do is go through scripture and read of the things that has happened to a lot of our brothers and sisters because of their disobedience toward God. And I want you to also keep in mind, after reading and studying those things, we are worse than they were. Keep that in mind. So if we're worse than they were, we have an extreme problem. And we clearly need to get ourselves together and learn the ways of God while we still have breath in us. Because when the Most High God come back, the second time, my brothers and sisters, it's not going to be nice. This is a dead serious walk we own. I want you to clearly understand that. We need to understand those things. Let's reiterate both these texts again. Isaiah 34, 7 and 8. And the unicorns shall come down with them and the bullocks with the bulls. And their land shall be soaked with blood and including their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the spirit of God's vengeance and the year of the recompenses of the controversy of Zion. From here, let's go to Isaiah 61 and verse 2. And it's recorded, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Spirit of God and the day of vengeance of our guide, Yahweh, forethought, to comfort all that mourn. Are you with me? We need to understand these things, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Revelation. Revelation, chapter 19, verse 13. And it's recorded. And he was clothed with a vesture, with a garment dipped in blood, and including his name was called the Spirit of God. Are you with me? The Word, Truth, Righteousness, Judgment, Jehovah. Oh, when he's coming back, my brothers and sisters, you want to be on the right side of the plumb line. I want you to clearly understand that. You want to be on the right side of the plumb line. Because if you've held to the ways of the world, you will find out firsthand everything that you have read in terms of his wrath that's recorded in the word. 
you will clearly understand that providing you hold to the ways of God, providing you once was a follower of Christ, learning what his truths are and has turned away from that, you will understand what he actually meant about his wrath that's recorded here in the word of, of, of him. I want you to clearly understand that. Most high God is not playing with us, my brothers and sisters. This is a dead serious walk, and we had better take it as such. We need to stop listening to these stupid men in these buildings. We need to stop listening to them. We need to humble ourselves and open up the book and learn and show ourselves approved. We have to study to show ourselves approved. That man is not going to show you approved unto the Most High God. He needs to show himself approved unto the Most High God. But a lot of them sacrifice their own life for gain. So if that's, if that's an issue, or if that's the issue with a lot of them, and you have Christian pastors that's here in this teaching, my advice to you, if you're going to hold to that way of living, live your best life now. That's the, about the best advice I can give you. Because after that flesh you in expire, you're going to have an extreme and an eternal problem with the Most High God. I want you to clearly understand that. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name was called the Word of God. Are you with me? From here, let's go back to Isaiah 63, verse 3. And it's recorded. I have trodden the wine pressed alone for a thought, and of the people there was none with me. For I will tread them in mine anger, and including trample them in fury for a thought and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. Did you see that? I'm going to highlight that by itself. And their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. You let Elder Johnson tell you this, that's what really ticked him off. <laughs> yeah, because you got all this blood on, on, on my clean white garment. That just added more anger. And I will stain all of my raiment. Most High God ain't going to be playing. He's, he's cutting heads and, I mean, he's, he ain't even taking names because he already know which ones are his. Keep that in mind. You can't sneak nothing past the Most High God. Absolutely 100% nothing. We need to understand that. And I will stain all my raiment. From here, let's go to, uh, let's go back to Revelation. <clears throat> let's go back to Revelation, chapter 19, and verse 15. And it's recorded, 15 and 16, excuse me. And it's recorded right here. And including out of his mouth go up a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule with the rod of iron. And including he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of the Almighty God. 16, and he hath on his vesture, and including on his thigh a name, a way written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. So if anyone here takes this to, takes God's way for granted, if there's anyone here that think that they could receive a spot into the kingdom of God by going into these buildings, if there's anyone here that believes and thinks within themselves that there's another way other than this way of getting into the kingdom of God, you have sadly been mistaken. These things are written and recorded for our learning. 
That's why they are here. And it's extremely important that we follow the ways of God. We need to choose life because I can assure you we're going to choose one or the other. Let's pivot just for a moment. Let's go to Deuteronomy. We're going to prove the point. Deuteronomy 30 and 19. And it's recorded. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you exactly the point that I have set before you life and death blessing and cursing. Therefore, for this reason, choose life that both thou and thy seed may live. Extremely important that we understand that, my brothers and sisters, because if we're going to continue on our own path, it's not going to go well when that flesh you ain't expire. I can assure you that. From here, let's go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah chapter 63, and we'll hit verses 4 through 6. And it's recorded. For the day of vengeance is mine. Excuse me. For the day of vengeance is in mine heart, and the year of my redeemed has come. Keep in mind, this is Jehovah speaking. And I looked, and there was none to help thought, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore, for this reason, mine own arm, my own power, brought salvation unto me, for thought, and including my theory, it upheld me. And I will tread down the people in mine anger, and make them drunk with my theory, and including I will bring down their strength to the earth. You don't want to you don't want to be on, on, on the left side of the plumb line. You do not want this visitation. You know how sometimes you can go through scripture and you'll see somewhere it says God pled with you. Keep one thing in mind. That ain't what you think it means. I want you to clearly understand that. That's not what you think it means. If you have a visitation or God pleading with you about something, it is not good. That's not good at all. That's why it's so important for us to hold to the ways of God and hold to his way and not the ways of the world. From here, let's go to Isaiah 66 and verse 16. And it's recorded. For by fire and by his sword will the Spirit of God plead with all flesh. Are you with me? And the slain of the Spirit of God shall be many. This is not this is not what you think it's talking about. That's a visitation. And clearly you don't want that. For by fire and including by his sword will the Spirit of God plead with all flesh. And the slain of the Spirit of God shall be many. From here, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 49. We'll hit verses 11 through 22. We'll stop at 17, but we'll catch up at the end, my brothers and sisters. So this is Jeremiah chapter 49. Verses 11 through 22, and it's recorded. Leave thy fatherless children. I will preserve them alive for thought, and let thy widows trust in me. For thus saith the Spirit of God, for thought, behold, they whose judgment was not to drink of the cup have assuredly drunken for thought, and including perfection and beauty art thou he that shall altogether go unpunished? Question. Thou shalt not go unpunished, but thou shalt surely drink of it. What? The cup of what? His wrath. For I have sworn by myself, saith the Spirit of God, that Bosra shall become a desolation, a reproach, a shame, a disgrace, a waste, and including a curse. For thought, and all the cities thereof shall be a perpetual wastes. 
I have heard a rumor from the Spirit of God, and an ambassador is sent unto the heathen, saying, Gather ye together, and come against her, and rise up to the battle. For lo, I will make thee small among the heathen, and despised among men. Thy terribleness hath deceived thee, and the pride of thine heart, O thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rocks, that holdeth the height of the hill. Though thou shouldest make thy nest as high as the eagle, I will bring thee down from thence, saith the Spirit of God. Yeah, the Most High God is not playing with us, my brothers and sisters. This is 17 down through 22, and it's recorded. Also, Edom shall be a desolation. Everyone that goeth by it shall be astonished, and shall hiss at all the plagues thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and including Gomorrah, and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Spirit of God, no man shall abide there, neither shall a, shall a son of man dwell in it. Behold, remember, he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan against the habitation of the strong. But I, however, I will suddenly make him run away from her. And who is, who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her? Question. For who is like me? And who will appoint me the time? And who is that shepherd that will stand before me? See, all these are questions that the Most High God, you know, is asking. Because you have a lot of those individuals that can get very bold in thinking that they can do all of these things. They can stand before God with, with, with all of this type of mindset. Keep that in mind. This is dead serious walk. Because the scripture says in, in uh, Revelation 19, 13, his vesture was dipped in blood. The slain was what? It was many. Keep that in mind. Verse 20. Therefore, hear the counsel, hear the advice of the Spirit of God that he take, hath taken against Edom for thought, and his purposes that he hath purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitations desolate with them. Exactly the point. The earth is moved at the noise of their fall. At the cry of the noise thereof was heard in the Red Sea. Remember, behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Bosra, and including at that day shall the heart of the mighty men of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. So that's going to be, that's going to be very painful. <laughs> that's, that's going to be very and extremely painful. This is why, my brothers and sisters, that we have to remove ourselves from these, these church buildings. You got these men and women giving you their thought, what they think Scripture is saying, without searching the Scriptures. They'll go two or three Scriptures above and two or three Scriptures below and try to pull understanding from, from there to get the understanding of this text. How do we do that? It's through God's precepts. Precepts give you clarity. Precepts give you understanding. Precepts unlock the, the true life of the word of God. It unlocks that. Once it unlocks that, those things that we are learning will never thirst no more for those things. But we have to apply those things that we are learning to our life. We have to apply those things that we are learning and place those things in our hearts. So when we're going through our studies, we are using those things so we can see what those truths are. That way we're being protected. We're being protected. That's the bulwark. The word is your protection. So when you hear these falsities that other people are throwing up at you and they think that they understand what the scriptures are saying, now you know what those truths are. Because all you have to do is go into the word of God to get it. Retrieve it out of the storehouse, which is what? Your heart. The kingdom. All of these things has to be in the kingdom of God. But we can't allow, we won't allow those things to 
uh, uh, become part of our heart if we're not going to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves first. We have to be willing to learn the ways of God. We have to be willing to give this life for his. So if you're not willing to give up pork, if you're not willing to give up going in the church building, if you're not willing to give up fornication and all these things that you like doing in the flesh, if you're not willing to give up all of these things that's an abomination and uncleanness towards God, all of this lasciviousness and all of these things that the flesh likes to do, and you want to hold to that, you cannot be a disciple of the Most High God. I want you to clearly understand that. You cannot be a disciple. You cannot be a follower of Christ. Why? Because you're doing everything contrary to his way. We need to understand these things, my brothers and sisters. We need to wake up out of this deep sleep that we have been in. And the word of God is your alarm clock to wake you from this, this sleep that you're in. The question is, are you going to listen for the sound? You got people that want understanding of the word of God. You hear them say, I pray for the word, uh, uh, understanding, I pray for this. Okay, that's fine. But what did God say? If you prayed for it, let's pivot again. Let's, let's, if you prayed for understanding, let me show it to you. It's up to you. To receive it. Jeremiah 3.15, I will give you pastors according to my own heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So if you prayed for it and you understand this text, you need to open up the Bible and get busy. You need to remove yourself from that garment that you are in and wash your clothes. I want you to clearly understand. You need to wash your clothes. What does that mean? You need to cross over Jordan. You need to get into the Bible and see what those things that's required of you to do. You need to get into the Bible and learn of the ways of God. You need to get into the Bible and to understand and know how to kill off your flesh, your grave clothes. I want you to stay with me. We have to kill these filthy garments that we're in. They have to go. They have to be washed. We have to take this flesh and hang it up on that tree. I want you to clearly understand what I'm saying to you, my brothers and sisters. This is no game God is playing with us at all. We had better take this walk serious, or otherwise we in we we in for a, a, a long way for eternity. We in for eternity to the left side of the plumb line, and you don't want that. You clearly don't want that because if you hold to the left side of the plumb line, you're going to have an extreme problem with the Most High God, I can assure you. So let's go back to our teaching. We need to understand what's, what's recorded, my brothers and sisters. So let's reiterate uh, verse 22 again. Jeremiah 49 and 22. Remember, behold, he shall come up and fly as the eagle, and including spread his wings over Bozrah, and including at that day shall the heart of the mighty man of Edom be as the heart of a woman in her pangs. That's going to be very, extremely painful. From here, let's go back to Obadiah. Obadiah. Verse 2, and it's uh, verse 2 to 10, I'm sorry. And we'll take it all the way down to 10, my brothers and sisters. And it's recorded. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high for thought, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? That's a question. 
Though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Spirit of God. If thieves came to thee, if robbers by night, how art thou cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? Question. Question. Had they not stolen if they have had enough? If the grape gatherers came to thee, would they not leave some grapes? How are the things of Esau searched out? You see how that is right there? Exclamation mark. How is how are his hidden things sought up? That's that's wrath. You see these exclamation marks? All men of thy confederacy have brought thee even to the border. The men that were at peace with thee have deceived thee and prevailed against thee for thought. They that eat, they that learn thy bread have laid a wound under thee. There is none understanding in him. Shall I not in that day, saith the Spirit of God, even destroy the wise man out of Edom and the out? Excuse me, and the understanding out of the Mount of Esau? That's a question. And the mighty men of Teman shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Why? Because of how he treated his brother. Because of how he treated his brother. Verse 10, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, exactly the point, shame shall cover thee and shall be cut off forever. Who? Esau. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 35. And verse 5. And it's recorded. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and including hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms 137. Psalms 137 and 7. And it's recorded. Remember, O Spirit of God, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, forethought, who said, Bear it, bear it, even to the foundation thereof. Why? Because Jacob had this way against Jacob. Esau had this way against Jacob. He committed all his problem with his own brother. He did things to Jacob that wasn't pleasing to the Most High God. So the Most High God is going to do Esau in for that. See, we have to understand one thing, my brothers and sisters. The Word of God, it shows us and gives us understanding to all of those things that we, we are reading and studying in the Word. If we hear things that, that um, sounds an alarm to us, we go right into the Word of God to see if, in fact, if what those individuals are telling us is true. That's the whole purpose of us learning the ways of God. But here's a man that said, that illustrates that there is blood in heaven. And the thing about it that really irritates me about it, as I've said before, is the individuals that listen to this man and not even reading and studying for themselves. How do I know that they're not reading and studying? Because they allow them to pull them away from the scripture 
that tells us that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Do you think that they're reading and studying if someone has pulled them away from their text? Do you think that they're reading and studying when in fact everything in the Bible is spirit and they hold to the ways of flesh? Do you think that they're reading and studying the word of God? It's impossible that they are because they're allowing these other things to get in their way. That's why we have to hold to the ways of God. We have to uh, have our Bibles with us. That's our weapon. That's everything to us. So when you got these fools to come up to you talking all of this foolishness, then all you have to do is combat that lie with what the truth is in God's word and show them what those truths are. You kill that doctrine. See, we have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters, despite those things that uh, our brothers and sisters are doing. The objective is to share this truth with them. But if, again, if they don't want to adhere to it, then you keep it moving. You keep moving forward. You don't allow them to be a stumbling block for you. You love them while they're here. That's the best as you could do, providing if they hold to the ways of the world. But if they're willing to humble themselves and listen to see what those truths are, then you should be apt to show it to them and to share that truth with it. See, we have to, we, we're all one body, and we all help one another, my brothers and sisters. We help encourage one another. We lift one another up. We uh, pray for one another. Those that of us that are diligently seeking after God and those of us that are uh, brothers and sisters according to this, this way of living, according to the ways of God. These are the things that we do. These are the attributes that we should exhibit towards one another. But again, if you have those that you want to share this truth with and they don't want to have anything to do with it, you keep moving. But you allow the word of God to stand. The word of God is going to stand forever. So if people want to believe that there is blood in heaven, then you let them believe that. If they want to hold to it, then you let them hold to that. Because it's clear if they're adamant about it and they're going to continually stick to their guns, then you let them stick to that. See, if a man want to be wise in this world, let him be a fool that he's wise. We have to always keep these our focus, my brothers and sisters, always. We can't allow these stupid men and women to pull us away from it. Let's, let's, let's read a couple of verses from the top here. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there, were, there we sat down, yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hanged our harps. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they carried us away captive, required of, of us a song. And they that wasted us required of us merit, joy, saying, sing us one of those songs of Zion. And you got a lot of us that sing those songs today. When we clearly should be confessing those sins that we've committed against our God. This is one of those songs, Psalms 137, all the way down to eight, to nine, excuse me. That's a song, that's a confession that we need to be doing daily. Establishing our relationship with God through what? The spirit and prayer. I want you to stay with me. Verse five to six, I'm sorry, verse four to six. How shall we sing the spirit of God's song in a strange land exactly the point? If providing I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand, my power forget my, her coming, cunning. If providing I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth for thought. If providing I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy. Verse 8 and 9. O daughter of Babylon, who art perfection and beauty, art to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewarded thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dash up thy little ones against the stones. 
Are you with me? From here, let's go back to Ezekiel 35, and we'll hit verses 6 and 7. And it's recorded. Therefore, as I live, saith the Creator, Yahweh, I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Verse 7, Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. From here, Let's go back to Obadiah. Verse 10. And it's recorded. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame, shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. I want to reiterate that text because we need to understand Jacob is done all of these things to our brothers and sisters for gain and for all kinds of things, my brothers and sisters. So if he done that to his brother, the Most High God is not pleased with that. Have you ever seen those, those, those slave movies and you always see that brother that's always helped tying up the rest of them and catch, catch a perine? Captivating the rest of them, that's Esau. But we see clearly those things that he has done towards Jacob. All we have to do is search the scriptures. From here, let's go to Deuteronomy and pull some information. Deuteronomy chapter 23 and verse 7. And it's recorded. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite for thought, for he is thy brother. Exactly the point. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian for thought, because thou was a stranger in his land. So we see clearly that we shouldn't hate one another. We shouldn't hate Esau. He's our brother. Shouldn't hate him. He's our brother. Let's, let's pull some more information so we can get some understanding. Let's go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 27. And let's hit verse 41. And it's recorded. And Esau hated Jacob, exactly the point, because of the blessings wherewith his father blessed him. And including Esau said in his heart, the days of mourning for my father are at hand. For thought, then will I slay my brother Jacob. And you go back to chapter 25. But Esau, what did he do? Esau thought that his inheritance was stripped of him from Jacob. No, he gave it to him. Jacob didn't, didn't steal anything from him. Esau, he was according to the flesh. Esau, let, let, let's get a little closer look at Esau. Let's pivot again. Let's, let's go to Hebrews. Let's see what Esau did here. Hebrews, I'm sorry. Yeah, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 16. This is what Esau did. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. One morsel of meat. One morsel. Flesh. That's what he did. Sold it for flesh. So if we're holding to the ways of the world, just be and we're willing to do our brothers and sisters in because of such, then you do that. Understand your outcome. The Bible is clear as to what your outcome is. 
So if we want to place ourselves in the position of Esau and for a morsel of meat sell our birthright and do things towards our brothers and sisters that's not pleasing unto the Most High God because of that, It's right here in front of us. His garment was dipped in blood because when he's coming back, he's not playing with any one of us. Keep that in mind. We have to keep our focus on this journey, my brothers and sisters. It is extremely important that we do such because if we allow these things to, to beset us, we're in trouble. So from here, let's go back to Obadiah. Obadiah chapter 11. I mean, uh, verse 11, excuse me. Verse 11 through 15. And it's recorded. And the day that thou stood upon the other side, and the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them, exactly the point. However, but thou should have not have looked on the day of thy brother and the day that he became a stranger or thought, neither should have thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction, for thought, neither should thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou should have not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity, for thought, yea, thou should have not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither should have have Thou have looked, stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape for thought. Neither should have thou have delivered up those of his, his that did remain in the day of distress. Watch this. For the day of the Spirit of God is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done it, shall, excuse me, as thou have done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thy own head. Exactly the point. Why? Because Esau did things towards Jacob that he shouldn't have never done. All of these things that's listed here, Esau did that. I want you to clearly understand that. So, why are we going through these verses? We're just illustrating why blood was on the garment of Jehovah. See, when we first started this teaching, I uh, made mention of this pastor was teaching his congregation, and that's why he started out Revelation 19 and 11. He wanted to put that little nugget in your head about heaven. So he figured if you hold him to that and he's going to add more to it as he reads down, then he's going to get those that he's calling himself teaching to understand that this blood was in heaven. See, we have to get out of that mindset. The Bible shows us everything that we need to know. Precepts. Through the precepts of the word of God, it gives us clarity. Always hold to that, my brothers and sisters. Don't let anyone pull you away from that. Because if they can pull you away from that, they can pull you away from eternal life. You can't afford to allow that to happen. A lot of us that are here at KJBU, we take this walk serious. And then you have a lot of us that are here, even right now, that could care less about uh, what those things are that are recorded. You have a lot of them that could care less about it. And if that's the attitude that a lot of our people have, if in fact they are here, you're in the wrong place. Because the objective here is to learn what it is that we must do. Those things that's required of us to 
achieve eternal life. These are the things that we need to be learning here. We're not here to follow that other foolishness. We're here for one purpose and one purpose only. One purpose only. To worship and serve the Most High God and to learn about God and to learn of those things that is extremely important for us to do. If providing, we seek a spot into his kingdom. I want you to clearly understand that. The word of God illustrates everything, the, his truths. So if it's things that we're uh, unaware of, if it's things that we want to know, and it deals with the Most High God, those answers are right here and recorded, right here in his, in his word. That's why it's important for us to diligently seek after him. Because those truths are going to be revealed. Those truths are going to stand. No, there's never been blood in heaven, and neither can it be. You're trying to push some corner into another realm which is spiritual. It will not work. It's just like trying to force a, a round pig into a, a square block. It won't work. It won't fit. We have to keep our focus, my brothers and sisters. From here, let's go to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 35 and 15. And it's recorded. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the house of Israel, because it was desolate, so will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Idumea, even all of it, and including they shall know. Watch this. Got to highlight that by itself. That I am the Spirit of God. Who is he going to allow? To, who is he going to let know? Idumea, Edom. From here, let's go to. Ezekiel 36 and 5. And it's recorded right here. Therefore, for this reason, thus saith the Creator, Yahweh, Surely in the fire of my jealousy have I spoken against the residue of the heathen and included against all Adumia, not some of them, all Adumia, which have, a, which have appointed my land and to their possession with joy of all their heart, with the spiteful minds to cast it out for prey. From here, let's go to James, pull some information. James chapter 2, verse 13. And it's recorded. For he shall, for he shall have judgment without mercy, exactly the point who? Jehovah that have showed no mercy for thought, and mercy rejoices against judgment. So Esau never showed mercy against Jacob, did he? No. So you think the Most High God is going to show him mercy? This is his brother we're talking about. The same one the Most High God hates. Let's, let's, let's build on that. So we're just going to go one verse. Let's go to Malachi. Just to make sure we're all on the same page. Malachi 1 3, and I hated Esau and laid his mountain and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Are no, you with me? Laid it waste. Why? Because he hated his brother Jacob. Whereas Edom said, We are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. For thought, thus said the Spirit of God of hosts, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness. Who? Esau, Idumea, and the people against 
whom the Spirit of God hath indignation forever. Wrath. Just to make sure we clear. That's all. Just want to make sure we clear. So from here, let's go back to our teaching as we wind down this teaching. Let's go back to Obadiah. Obadiah in verse 16. And it's recorded. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and including they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had ne not been. This this is this is clear, my brothers and sisters. This is clear. I want you to understand that. From here, let's go to Job. Job chapter 21. And let's hit verse 20. And it's recorded. His eyes shall see his destruction, and he shall drink of the wrath of the Almighty. Who? Edom. Esau. Idumia. From here, let's go back to Obadiah, and we'll hit verses 17 and 18. And it's recorded. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau for stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them for thought, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau for thought, for the Spirit of God has spoken it. I hope it's becoming clear as to why the blood was on the Most High God's garment. We need to clearly understand that. This is why I was on his garment. From here, let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 5 and verse 14. And it's recorded. Wherefore thus saith the Spirit of God of hosts, because ye speak this word, remember, behold, I will make my words in thy mouth fire. And this people would that ain't good right there because if you just trouble, you see what is his headed. And including, it shall devour them. From here, let's go to Joel. Joel chapter 2 and verse 5. And it's recorded. Like the noise of chariots, on the tops of mountains shall they leap like the noise of a flame of fire that devoureth the stubble as a strong people set in battle array. Let's go back to Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. For remember, behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven for thought and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Keep in mind, did he not say he was going to make Esau stubble? And the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Spirit of God of hosts, that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. From here, let's go to Psalms. Psalms chapter 7 and verse 13. And it's recorded. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death, forethought. 
He ordaineth his arrows against the persecutors. And my brothers and sisters, we'll pull this last text, and it's located right here in Obadiah. We'll pull these last texts, forgive me. Nineteen all the way down to twenty one. And it's recorded. And they of the south shall possess the mound of Esau, poor thought, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim, and including the fields of Samaria, and the and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. Verse twenty, and the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the child, the Canaanites, excuse me, even unto Zarephath, for thought, and the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Shephar, shall possess the cities of the south. Verse 21, and the Savior shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau, for thought, watch this, and all the kingdoms shall be the Spirit of God. So my brothers and sisters, as we see, going through scripture here in this teaching, and this just a ton of other, other scriptures why the Most High God had it in for Esau because of how he treated his brother. When we're going through scripture, it's important that we maintain a particular focus. Whatever that focus is, whether we're doing an independent study or whether we're searching the scriptures just for the truth of God's word. Or if we're searching the scriptures to make sure that of something that someone has uh, made mention of us to see if in fact if it's true or not. It's extremely important that we hold to God's word. We take no man at his word for anything. You hold to the ways of God. You never allow anyone to pull you away from what those truths are. So why was the Most High uh, God's garment uh, dipped in blood? It's because of the things that Esau had done to his brother Jacob. It's clear. We have to stop listening to these men in these church buildings. We have to stop listening to these women that call themselves teachers of God's word. You can't show that nowhere in, the, in, in, in the Scripture. We have to always hold to the ways of God, and we have to always search the Scriptures uh, for the truth of God's Word. We have to study to show ourselves approved. We have to continually learn of those things that's required of us and add those things to our life, my brothers and sisters, and to always hold to what we know to be true in the Word of God. These are the things that's important on, uh, to us on this journey. You'll never allow anyone to pull you away from what those truths are. So my brothers and sisters, as always, steal the ground from whence you've come. Receive your Oma daily and never, never let anyone pull you away from what you know to be true in God's word. So until we meet again, I say to each and every last one of you, Shalom.